How's it going everybody? My name is Lucian. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Minecraft using PaperMC and uh, Linux. So to get started, we're going to go to PaperMC.io. I'm already here. We're going to click on this downloads button. We're going to click on paper. And on this download link right here, we're going to right click on that and hit copy link. Then we are going to SSH into our server. Now you're going to want to SSH into your server. In my case, I already am right here. So now what we're going to do is let's create a new folder with MKDR for make directory. Then we're going to call it uh, HipRMC. You can call it whatever you want. This is what I'm going to call it. Then we're going to CD into that directory. Just like that. And then what I'm going to do is type in wgit and then I'm going to right click within the console and that will paste that link that we uh, copied from the browser. And then from there, we're just going to hit enter. And that downloads the jar file, which we can now see if we do a quick ls. We can see this jar file. Now, if your Ubuntu server, I'm assuming you're using Ubuntu, is completely fresh, we will need to set up um, Java on this on this machine. We don't have Java installed, but we can't technically run the server right now without it being installed. So in order to install Java, I'm going to right click the command I have here off, to, off the side of my screen. We're going to do this command right here and then base dash Y hit enter. All the commands that I copy and paste into the um, into my console here, I'll put down below so you guys can also copy and paste as well. Now the version of Java I'm installing is working with the latest version of PaperMC uh, as I'm recording this video. So it is working with 1.21.4. Uh, depending on what version you end up deciding to go with, the Java version you download might need to be different. So if you are playing around with stuff like that, keep that in mind that you might need to be installing a different version of Java. But we're doing the latest, so this is going to work for us. Now that we have Java installed, let's clear out the console just so it's easier for everyone to see here. All right, so now we are going to want to make a startup script uh, so we can start our server. So in order to do that, we're going to do nano start.sh. Then I already have a script. I'm going to copy and paste in here. And then this is set up by default to use just four gigabytes. If you want to change that, just change the number from four to whatever number you might want for your desired RAM. This is the same name of the file when we ls. This is the name of the jar file of what I'm doing. Depending on when you're doing this, this could be different. So just keep this in mind when you're doing this in the future or maybe if you're doing an older version of, uh, of Minecraft for an older version of paper, just you might need to change this line right here depending on what uh, what jar you downloaded. After this is done, we're gonna do Control, then X, and then we're gonna hit Y, and then we're gonna hit Enter. Then we're gonna do chmod plus X, and then start at SH. This will make it executable. So if we do LS here, if this is yellow, it's not executable. But we can go ahead and start the server so we can accept the ULA. So we'll do dot four slash start dot sh then hit enter this will go ahead and start the server all right as you can see here it failed to start because of the uh ula so what we're going to do is if you want to see that file let me clear this out to make it nice and clean for you guys if we do a quick ls you can see that we have eula dot text file and we need to basically accept that so we're going to do nano ULA.txt. I'll hit enter. And using our arrow keys on the keyboard, we're going to go down and over. Then from false, we're going to type in true. Control X, Y, enter. 
And then if we start our server again, it'll be able to start up. So let's go ahead and start the server again. I'm gonna use a screen this time, just so it's in another window. So if I need to detach to do other things, we can. So if we do screen dash capital S, we'll call it whatever we want. We'll call it Minecraft and then hit enter. This will bring us into another screen. And then once we're in here, we can do dot start to SH, enter. And this will go ahead and start up our server. All right, once we see this, our world is done generating and we can go ahead and log into our server. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick here. So we're going to hit add server, Minecraft server. And then for the server address here, is going to be the same thing as what your whatever server your server's IP address is. In my case, I'll highlight it right here. That's the IP address for my server. Since I'm running this locally, I'm going to be using the local IP address. I'm going to type that in here. We're going to hit done. Then I'm going to go ahead and connect to it. And just like that, you're in you're in the server. Pretty simple and easy to do. I'm going to disconnect real quick. So from the console, if I want to leave the server up and running, but I need to do other things, we're gonna do control A, then we're gonna hit D. Now we'll detach our, our screen. Then we can do other things. So if we do another LS real quick, you see we have a bunch of other files now. We have a plugins folder, so we can download and install plugins into there. Uh, we have our server properties. So if we want to edit our server properties, we can do that as well. So for example, we can do nano server dot properties and hit enter. And then we can change whatever settings in here that we need to change. Pretty easy peasy. Type that up by mistake. All right, and now Let's say we need to access the console again. We can do screen dash R and that'll reattach us back to the console here. So if I need to appeal my, uh, myself, let's uh, connect back to the server real quick. I should have just stayed connected, totally forgot about this part. Release from mouse, okay, I can just type in OP. else? And then boom, I'm OP. So if I go in game, you can see it in the chat. Maybe you can, it's, it's kind of small, but we can do game mode, creative, and that puts me in creative. Now I can fly around. Do whatever I want, if I want to go back to survival, do survival, and then I'm back on survival. Easy as that. So now, if you want your server to be accessed outside of your local network, you will need to port forward and open open up a your port for Minecraft, which is 25565. I can't show you the port forwarding part on your router. That's usually different for everybody. But I can show you how to do it, how to open it up on your firewall in, um, in the server so you can have the firewall port open. So we're going to use UFW, so we'll do sudo UFW allow, then we'll do 25565, hit enter, and just like that, it's allowed, but by default, UFW is disabled, so we're also going to do sudo UFW allow 22, and this will allow us to maintain our SSH because SSH uses port 22, so we're gonna need that open. And I wanna make sure you do that before you actually go ahead and enable the firewall. So after you do that, we'll do sudo UFW enable. And then here we get a warning about interrupting connections with SSH, which we don't need to worry about as we just opened up this port right here. So we're good to go on that. We'll hit Y. And then boom, our firewall is enabled. So if we do a sudo UFW status, you can see the ports 22 and the Minecraft port that we need. So that's all you need to do for the firewall. Next, you need to open up 25565 into your router. You don't need to open up 22. 
but you do need to open up 25565 if you want to have other people outside your local network connect to the server. Now let's talk about something to do that's extra, that's not necessary, but if you want to run the server a little bit more efficiently, then you're going to want to do the following. So first, let's go back into our Minecraft screen here, and I'm going to kill it with Control A and then K, Y, and that's going to kill our Minecraft server. We're not going to run it like that no more. We don't need to. Next thing we're going to do is create a service using the following command here. Right here where it says Minecraft, you can change that to whatever name you want. Minecraft is just easy, so we'll leave it at that. I'm gonna hit enter. And then from there, I'm going to copy and paste the following information in. Your stuff will be different. So for example, the home slash solution, well the solution part will be your username. Your username might be Something else it could be Bob. So if your name is Bob, you replace solution with Bob. And same thing for right here as well. Everything else you can leave the exact same as I have it on the screen. Once you have all this, you do Control X, Y, Enter. And then what we need to do is enable it. So first thing we're going to do is reload the daemon. And then we're going to enable the service with sudo system CTL enable minecraft.service and once what this does is if your server restarts or it crashes or you know maybe you restart the server intentionally this will automatically start minecraft so this is like a, a built-in redundancy so you don't have to worry about coming in here and typing in dot star to sh every single time you need to start the server. This does it automatically. So after we enabled it, in order to start the server, we'll do sudo systemctl start minecraft dot service. We all need to do this once. Once it's done, it'll stay up and running. Even if we did sudo reboot, let's say you need to reboot the server for whatever reason. Um, this, the Minecraft server, as soon as a uh, Ubuntu server is back up and running, your Minecraft server will automatically start up, back up and running. So we could test that out by looking at sudo systemctl status, status minecraft.service. And we can see here that it is active. And then you can see a bit of the console here. And then we could test that out and make sure it is running by just reconnecting back to the server. And just like that, we are back in the server. I can do game mode, do uh, creative, then I can fly again, just like that. So now, now you might be wondering, well, how do I access the console if I need to OP somebody or whatever the case may be, maybe you need access to the console for something. We're gonna use Archon for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the server with sudo system CTL stop and then we'll do minecraft that service. This will stop our minecraft server. All right. And then what we need to do is enable our pond. So I'm going to go to clear this out and make it a little bit cleaner. If we do nano server dot properties and hit enter, we are going to look for a couple things here. So let's see, Archon password. You can make the password whatever you want. I'm just gonna call mine Lucia Dev. This port, you're going to want to remember that. And we also need to enable Archon, which is right here. So instead of false, we're gonna type in true. Control X, Y, enter. Now we've enabled Archon, so we can sudo system yell start. Minecraft that service, and then we'll wait for that service to boot back up. While we're waiting for that, we need to install MC Archon. So in order to install MC Archon, I'm going to copy and paste a series of commands here, which I'll I'll have down below. First one is to get the uh, the star file from the GitHub. Actually, before I do that. I'm sorry. 
Let's uh, cd dot dot. This will take us back to our home directory here. So we'll just leave it in the home directory here. We'll just right click again, paste this command, hit enter. Then it's downloaded. So if you do ls, you can see the tar file right here. Then we're going to extract that tar file with this command right here. Again, I'll have the command down in the description below. All right, and then what we need to do is we're gonna move that, this arc, this MC, MC Archon that it created, we're gonna move that to our local bin with this command. And then we need to make that executable with this command, enter. And just like that, R set up with Archon. So in order to connect to the Archon, we are going to do MC Archon dash H localhost uh, dash sorry dash P two five five seven five dash we're doing equals dash lower oh my gosh dash P lowercase P this is going to be for the password which my was just solution dev yours might be something else. So we'll hit enter. And just like that, we are logged into the Archon. So if I go back into the game real quick, just so I can show you that this is working. Okay, so as you can see, I'm back in the game. We'll do uh, slash time set uh, day. All right, so as you can see, I still type commands, I'm still OP. If I hit escape, go back to my terminal and we do DOP break styles, which is my Minecraft name. We'll hit enter. I'm no longer operator, so we can prove that by going back to the game and type in slash game mode, unknown command, go creative, can't do it. If I type in slash help, it shows me a small list of commands that I can do. And then what we can also do is, let's say time set uh, night. There was night time, time set noon. Now, there's, now it's noon, OP. OP myself again. Now I'm OP again. Now I can do slash game mode creative. And now I'm back into if I can apply again. So that's how you uh, uh, get access to your console if you need to do commands or whatever. And then we can just hit Control C in our terminal here if you want to close the Archon. And just like that, guys, we are done fully set up if the server crashes you can easily restart minecraft no problem it will do it automatically by itself you need access to your console you can use the mcr uh, mcr con that's it hope you guys enjoyed the video i appreciate you watching and i will see you on the next one